this video we're going to be looking at combustion, in particular the burning of a fuel, which is a candle in this case. So you can see on the right hand side we've got a candle sitting in a gas jar. There's nothing on the top of the gas jar and so the oxygen or air can get in there. We know that three things are needed for fire. One is that you need a fuel source and that's what we've got in the way of the candle. One is that you need air, or in particular oxygen, and that's what we're going to look at today. And the other thing is the heat. And we provided the initial heat source for this just by striking a match. So it was lit with a match. In the other gas jar, what I'm going to be doing is putting in a candle basically the same size as the one you can see burning. But instead of just letting air get in, I'm going to put in oxygen. So this is going to show that the oxygen is one part of air that does actually um, contribute towards combustion or burning. So there's the candle we're going to put in and I've got here a conical flask that I'm going to do a chemical reaction in to make some oxygen gas. The liquid I'm about to put in is called hydrogen peroxide. It's very similar looking to water. It also has a very similar formula to water H2O2. But actually that subtle change with that extra oxygen atom is enough to give it very different properties. So if I was to leave this out long enough, it would actually break down into water and oxygen all on its own. But what we're going to do is we're going to speed it up with a chemical called a catalyst. So it'll speed that up, making our oxygen a lot quicker. So here we go. I'm not going to add too much because this reaction does go pretty well on its own. As we can see there. So to get those bubbles of oxygen gas from the conical flask into the gas jar, I'm going to use a stopper with a hose coming off it. And the steam, or the stuff you can see coming off there, or possibly see coming off there, is actually just steam. So we can't see the oxygen, but the steam gives us a good indicator of when this is full. Okay, while that's doing its thing, I'll get this other match lit so that we can put it in. And what we're going to compare is we're going to compare the flame on the right hand side where it's just got air to the flame on the left hand side where it's got quite a lot more oxygen coming in. It would be nice if I could actually strike a match properly. So I'm going to take this out and put it in the sink just in case it starts reacting too aggressively. So apologies if my hands are in the way there. Okay, so now I'm going to slide this candle into our gas jar and see if there's any difference between these two flames. And hopefully that can be seen quite clearly on the video that the one on the left with oxygen in it rather than just air is going a lot more brightly. Now to make it a fair test I'll do this a few more times just to check that it's not the candle itself but time doesn't allow for that. Now remember at the start I said that there were three things needed oxygen, fuel and heat and both of those are present in those two gas jars. However Two of those things, oxygen and the fuel, get used up. So I can actually take away one of those three things by covering the top so that no more air or oxygen can get in. And look what happens to the flame when I do this. They both go out. So that sort of also helps us see that we do need all three things. If I take away the oxygen, then it'll go out. Now what you've been learning about is the two different types of Bunsen burner flames. Although the flames in both of these were yellow, that's because of the type of fuel being used. But hopefully you could see that one was definitely a lot brighter than the other when it had more oxygen or more air in there, though the important part of air. So that should be able to be used to help explain why the blue flame is hotter than the yellow flame. 